In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to record your screen with Open Broadcaster software, or OBS. Of course, there are tons of programs out there that let you record your screen, but some of them have watermarks, time limits, or don't let you record in HD. OBS is great for streaming video games, but you can also just record a file to your hard drive. There's OBS Classic, but that's only for Windows. OBS Studio, or multi-platform, is a little easier to use. It's very customizable, but since there are so many options, I actually found it hard to get started the first time I wanted to record a video. So you just download and install, there's nothing surprising here, I already have it installed. However, the first time, when you finish the installation, it'll say Run Application. But, if you notice in the title bar, I'm on a 64-bit computer, for some reason it defaults to a 32-bit, and the way you can tell is if it just says Windows in parentheses. So I'm going to close this, and you actually search for OBS, and this 32-bit one is the one that was just running. Clicking on the 64-bit, now you notice in the title bar, hey, it says 64-bit. Now you may notice, hmm, I can't see anything. OBS works with scenes and sources. Scenes are like collections of windows, and sources are the actual media sources, like a window, a webcam, a game. So you actually need to add something. If there isn't a scene, you can click this little plus sign to add a scene. I'm just going to make a new one for later. Go back to scene one. Now click add source. I'm going to do display capture, and then click OK. And now, see, this is my primary monitor. I do have a secondary monitor. You could also choose that if you wanted. Click OK, and of course you could rename this. You get the infinite mirroring effect. You should just minimize OBS when you're recording. Also going to add another source. There's tons of different things. Of course, see here's game. Video capture device, that's like a webcam. Just going to do an image for now. Click OK, and then you find the source. I'm just going to choose a logo and click OK. And you click these little arrows to drag it around and resize. Just going to put it in the bottom. Now you click Start Recording. And then right here, it shows you the time elapsed and the CPU used. As we scroll around a bit, unfortunately, there's no way to pause. You're just going to have to edit that out in post. Go back to OBS and click to stop recording. To view the recording, you need to go into Settings and find where it's stored. It's in Output, and then you can copy this Recording Path. Navigate to that path, and here's the new video. See, there's the logo in the top, and there's me scrolling. Now I'm going to explain a little bit more about scenes and sources, but don't leave yet because there's important stuff about settings and video quality. You can add also just a window capture. Click OK, and then you can choose any of the active windows. This is just a Windows Explorer window I have over here. And see, since window capture is at the top of the list of sources, it's actually covering the logo. So I can put it down, and the logo goes. You can drag these around to resize, and you can even drag them down and bigger, which basically crops them. This is capturing the window even if it isn't on screen. I can see Windows Explorer right now, yet it still knows that the program is running. And you can do some complicated stuff. You can reorder them, you can rename them, of course, and you could remove them with a minus sign or right click and remove. And you say, yes, I want to get rid of that. But don't get too crazy with sources because you might actually think you made another scene. Now, this is black because I have nothing right now. I'm going to add a window capture this time. This time I'm going to choose Audacity. Click over here, and I'm just going to drag it so it fills the screen a bit. Sometimes window captures are buggy catching the mouse. I'm going to add an image again. I'm going to add the Audacity logo, and let's just put it over there. Now if you start recording, you see this is recording one thing. Now if I switch to scene one, you get a scene transition. Notice my OBS window is still here. I could hide it behind on the right, or I could minimize it. But as you switch between, they kind of fade. That's this transition over here, 300 milliseconds. I'm going to stop recording. You can even have collections of scenes, so I'm going to make a new one. And this is a completely different space. Now you can add new scenes, you can add new sources. You can add the primary desktop back in with a display capture. OK, choose this one. And you could even start recording and then do scenes and switch between scene collections while recording. This is because if you have a bunch of scenes going on, like capturing a ton of windows at the time, and a webcam, and a game, it might be intensive for the processor on OBS. And so you can split things up with scene collections and only have a few things active at once. Of course, the scene transitions, you could add a cut, which is no transition, or you could say, hey, I want to add a new transition. Let's do a swipe transition. And you can say left, and now when you switch, hey, they kind of slide like that. This is really helpful if you have another monitor, then you can have OVS running and switch between your scenes recording different parts of your computer, close up or your entire desktop, with a simple scene transition. Audio is a very important thing we need to deal with. Right now, you notice this microphone. It's picking up me because I'm talking right now. But if that isn't working, you need to go to Settings and then Properties, and then it's on the default, but I want to make sure this one is my laptop microphone, but this is a headset microphone. This is going to be better quality. And you can also record desktop audio. So if I start playing some music, you notice, hey, now the desktop audio is going. 
Now if I pause it, see the desktop disappears. And of course, any time during recording, you can mute them and just say, hey, I just want to hear the computer and I don't want to accidentally have me breathing in the background. Now on to settings. General, standard, stream. This is where you can connect to a streaming service like YouTube or Twitch. Output is the important one. I'm going to change from simple to advanced and make sure if you're in the streaming tab, we want to change stuff in the recording tab, not the streaming tab. This tells you where your file is going to be saved. The format, make sure this is on MP4 and let's use the H.264 to match the recording for MP4. Rescaling the output. If you check this box, right now I'm recording in 1080p, but you could actually scale it down so you output a file which is in 720p. This is going to be a little more CPU intensive, but create a smaller file size. And the bitrate is really the most important thing. The file size defaults to about 2,500, which is decent, but I usually go up to 5,000. This is going to be twice as large a file, but it does improve the quality. If you go under 1,000, you can really notice pixelation and bad video quality. And you can play around with some tests, but I found like 5,000 is decent enough quality, and if you bump it up even more, I didn't notice a huge improvement. Of course, you go into the audio tab, you can change your sample rate and your channels, and then a bunch of other things with the different tracks. Video. This is your rescale output. Make sure this is not downscaled. You want to make sure the output is the same as the base resolution. And then of course you could have some hotkeys or keyboard shortcuts to simplify things. And there's a bunch of advanced options, but that's it. The important ones are in output, make sure that the bitrate is high enough, and in the video, making sure that the output resolution matches the input, unless you want to downscale.